Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to generate sequences of numbers. That is, numbers say from 1 through 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on, or numbers that repeat, for example, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 or numbers that skip um, like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, etc., etc. We'll just go through a couple examples. This should be a pretty straightforward lesson. So that being said, let's start our project with a new project so we can start fresh. So file new. Let's do an R script this time, even though I like the notebooks. I just sometimes want to switch it back and forth. So let's just start on line number two here, and we'll just assign a set of numbers to a variable. So I'm going to say num1. We're going to assign that to. Now we're going to use the C, which is what I've been referring to as like a column vector or a vector of numbers. Some people use the word concatenate. So the C will make sure you can concatenate numbers. So if I just want to generate numbers, if I pick the numbers, say 1, 3, 7, 9, and I do command enter on that, you'll see on the right hand side my numbers is a vector uh, that contains those numbers. Now this is not something that I can view in the viewer because it's not a actual matrix or a spreadsheet. So in that case, in order to view it, we can just type in the number and do command enter. And you'll see it at the bottom, the output is 1379. Simple enough with that. And you can reassign num1. doesn't matter. You can do c equals 2, 4, 6. And all of a sudden, you repeat num1, and you get 2, 4, 6. Makes perfect sense. All right. So we've got number 1 figured out. Let's just keep it as the first example. And we'll do... Uh, num2 is equal to 10, 11, 12. So what's cool is we can make a, a third number that's going to be the concatenation of both of those numbers. So that's why I guess the word concatenation comes in. We can actually concatenate, concatenate both of those by saying something like num3 is equal to the combination so um, of the concatenation of num1 and num2. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So now num3 is going to equal 1, 3, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's how you would concatenate two different sets of numbers that are uh, just like that. It's pretty interesting. So let's say you want to do a sequence of numbers. You can simply type in numbers 1 through 10 with a colon. So 1 through 10, if I hit Command Enter on that, you get the sequence 1 through 10. It does it automatically for you. Of course, you can do any numbers you want, 5 through uh, 20. It doesn't matter. It, it just generates them. So you want to... If you want to put those into a variable, though, we can do uh, num4 as assigned to the numbers 5 through 20. And if we do num4, so there are various ways to do this. There's plenty of ways to do this, and you're going to see all kinds of different methods. So I want to show you the basics. So let's say we want to do a sequence that starts at a certain number and skips numbers. Let's just do a sequence, so seq, and we'll just do a from, and we'll do a starting value of 2. And we'll say it's going to go to um, 20. And we're going to step it by, say, uh, by twos. So by equals two. So you set these parameters, you hit enter, and you have a sequence. If you look at the bottom here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, all the way up through 20. So it's a sequence, and it's a from, a two, and a by. And if I did by equals one, it's simply just the same thing as if you just did two through 20, like so. So those two are the same. And of course, you can assign these to variables all you want. So number five, assign it to that sequence of numbers, and we're good to go. One thing to know about R, which is something you'll need to know in the future when you start dealing with big data, is that once R has this stored in memory, say the sequence of 2 through 20, and other parts of your program reference other variables that are also 2 through 20, it actually doesn't make a copy of it until it needs to. R is smart enough to know that, um, hey, uh, I've got a sequence of numbers 2 through 20, and nobody's touched it yet, and it's still 2 through 20. So if five places want to store a variable called 2 through 20, R will know only store 2 through 20 one time and point it to that, point all those other variables to that spot. It's not that important now, but when you deal with rows that are in the millions and columns that go into the thousands, you really don't want to make and generate copies of things that you don't really need to until you need to. So... When you need to, you need to, but when you don't need to, let's not waste space. That's basically what I'm saying. So the next function I want to show you is the repeat function. So that's just as simple as REP. And again, if you just let it sit there, you get this little yellow box. 
you can hit the tab or hit the parenthesis then tab and it tells you what are we repeating. So let's do a repeat. We're going to repeat uh, the number two and we're going to say how many times? What times equals seven. We want to repeat two, seven times. Hit enter and there you go. On the bottom you see the output in my console. Seven twos. Pretty straightforward. Uh, it's all useful. It's very useful. Um, this also works with characters. So let's try something like repeat. I want to repeat the character A how many times? I want to repeat it 10 times. And we have 10 A's. Uh, it doesn't have to be A. You can do uh, Apple and it'll repeat Apple 10 times. So it's pretty interesting how you can do that. What's really cool though, you can, you can really concatenate the fun. You can actually um, put functions within functions and make it really neat. For example, let's do a repeat. And we're going to repeat not the letter A or Apple. We're going to repeat a combination or a concatenation or a column of things called apples and we'll call it pears. So we have apples and pears. See how it's embedded in that C inside those parentheses? So it's in a way one unit called apple pear. It's like a dictionary item or a key lookup palette, whatever you want to call it. But how many times do I want to repeat that? I want to repeat that five times. And what do we have? Apple pears, apple pears, apple pears, five times. So that's an interesting way to have repeating patterns and all that corresponds to numbers as well. Finally, I want to show you one last thing. It's called the sample. So if you want to do a number of samples, let's say I have uh, our numbers and we're going to assign numbers 1 through 100 and we want a random sample of that. So now we're starting to really talk about some statistics. Caveat, I'm not a statistician and I just know little bits and pieces that I'm going to show you throughout this because this is a more programmatic uh, course and tutorial than statistician. I'm not a statistician, but I will show you what I know along the way. So if you want to take a random sample of these numbers, so numbers 1 through 100, so we have the numbers. Let's just type in numbers and look at them. We have 100 numbers. I want to take a random sample. So I'm, I'm the scientist. I go out to the field and I say I want to randomly pick 15 of these. So how do we do that? Well, we take a sample, which is a, another function that's built into R. What do I want to take a sample of? I want to take a sample of the numbers. And how big of a sample do I want? I want to take 10 random samples. Okay, so now the next question is, if I hit comma and I hit tab, you're going to see replace equals. Let's read what that one says. Should sampling be with replacement? What that means is if I pull a 7 randomly and I say that was a random number for sure, am I putting that 7 back in the pool and then I pull again and I might get a 7 again? and then another seven, there's a possibility, there's a probability that that'll happen. So if we don't want that to happen, so we pull that seven out and that seven is no longer in the pool, you'll never possibly get that again. If you, you would normally, I would say most of your samples are going to be random samples without replacement. So you're gonna say replace equals false. Therefore, we get this random sample of numbers. If you see down below, 31, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and they're different every time you run it, right? So that's how you get a random number. And I hope you play around with some of these numbers and get used to the C using the concatenation or the column vector, however you want to look at it. Finally, if you haven't, subscribe below so you know when my next lesson comes out. I'm going to try to put these lessons out all the time and it's going to cater to beginner, to intermediate level, R, and programming in general. So see you on the next lesson.